Hello people, this is the video segment for the content of chapter 4 which is uh, called the slider crank mechanism. So let me show you the problem that we're going to be looking at. It's uh, this setup, so we have a track, we have a, a, cr a crank, a connecting rod and a simple. In fact, this is the, this, the, the baby version, simplified version of what is already posted and is appearing, I think, in chapter 15, if I'm not mistaken, which is, saying, uh, which is, which is under the single cylinder engine. Uh, th that particular chapter, which is uh, a more sophisticated version of the present one, is already posted on YouTube. I'm not going to, uh, by the way, this, this problem has been done by many, many people and they have been posted on YouTube. Some of them have sound, many of them don't. So uh, uh, I'm going to repeat this uh, for the sake of completeness and uh, I'm going to totally ignore any dimensions and although later on some physics into it, but uh, the physics is going to be meaningless because the geometry uh, have no essentially dimensions specified for it. All right, so let's uh, uh, start the product file and insert the first part, insert a new part in there. And I'm going to call this thing the track. Basically, it's the engine block. Think about it as the engine block. So let's wait until Katia comes. Uh, let me see. Uh, right there. All right, so uh, right click properties. We call it, call it the track or engine block, track, track and track. Okay, and uh, let's make it. It's basically a box with a little pin sticking on the side. Uh, okay, we're in part design on that plane. I will sketch a rectangle and then pad it. Right here. Okay. Exit. Pad it. Well, let, let me make it 10 inches here, it looks like. A little bit longer. Maybe 15. Okay. And then uh, on the side, I will draw a little. Uh, Circle which is going to get padded. That's where the pin for the the crank is going to be So there we are the pin of the crank is going to go into this pad, pad. Okay, so let's make it the uh, uh, 0.5 Let me make it a 1 Okay, good good All right There we are now, let's go ahead and insert the uh, the crank insert new part always say no right click properties call it the crank okay crank and crank all right let's make it on a convenient plane for me this is very convenient this plane at the end of the the pin is very convenient. I'm going to project that circle. There you are. Exit. Or oh, should just get back into it and complete the rest of the the rest of the crank. So the rest of the crank is going to be done with a profile like this. I will do some cleanup here later on, so if necessary. So there we are, we wrap it up. Okay, and over here, there, I'm going to draw a circle right at that. This is going to be the hole where the connecting rod pin is going to get inserted to. So why don't we uh, pad this thing in the other direction. Let me make it 0.5. All right. So this is going to be our uh, crank. Okay, so uh, let's go back here. I'm going to do a little bit of rotation. Uh, let me see now. Here is rotation, free rotation about this axis. 
want to move these things out of the way, this thing out of the way so I can see it better. All right, good. So insert new uh, new part in there. Always say no. Right click properties. I'm going to call it uh, Conrad, connecting rod. Conrad. Conrad and Conrad. Okay, let's make it. Double click on this on a convenient plane. For me, this is very convenient. I will sketch. Okay, first thing I'm going to do is project that circle. There we are. You see that? And then uh, there's the normal view. And draw the rest of the connecting rods. So let's see. And once again, using profile. Okay, so how about something like this? We're gonna do a clean up if necessary. There we are. And there. And there. Okay, and since I want to do a multi pad. Uh, I want to have two pins at these two endpoints. I'm going to draw another circle here. Exit. And do a multi-pad. So where is the multi-pad? Right there. Okay. I think it's still thinking. It did go to a state of coma. There we are. So this one is the actual connecting rod, the length of the connecting rod. So I'm going to make it 0 0.5, 0 0.5. This is the uh, the hole at the left end. Uh, I'm going to leave this thing as a hole, not make it a pin. But this one, I'm going to make it a pin. So uh, let's make it uh, one and a half. Uh, actually, one. Preview. And there we are. Okay, eventually, of course, I have to assemble these things. That's okay. So first of all, let me change the color of that to yellow. That's good. I'm going to assemble that in a minute. Maybe I should. Uh, let me make the let me make the uh, the piston and then assemble it. So insert new part in there, and this is going to be the piston. Right click properties. Okay, piston. Piston. And piston. Piston. Okay, let's make it. On a convenient plane. Well, how about uh, this plane? I will sketch. Why don't I project that circle? There we are, and uh, normal view. Okay, so uh, let me see now. Uh, let me exit, pad this. We may have to change the length of these things. Uh, for now, I'm going to make it like that. A little bit longer. I will have to probably resize this. Uh, yeah, it's too big. Let me make it uh, 1.5. And then uh, the rest of it. On this face, I will draw a, a rectangle, a centered rectangle to make it nicer. So this is going to be the piston, exit, and pad it. Okay, for now, I'm going to leave it like this, but eventually you have to change the size so that this looks... Uh, more reasonable. I think this is too long. Anyway, we'll, that's irrelevant right now. So let me change the color of this. All right. So we are ready to assemble this thing. Uh, we go to assembly design. Uh, separate these. So translate them in the X. Yeah. X and X. All right, let us anchor 
anchor the, the track and then coincidence between this axis and that axis and coincidence but this plane and that plane and update there we are now let's do the connecting rod and the, and the crank between this axis and that axis and coincidence this plane and that plane and update there we are about doing this now coincidence between this axis and that axis and for now let me actually make this thing as a coincidence between this plane and uh, that plane I, I will delete this because uh, this doesn't have to be a revolute join as I'm doing it right now. It is revolute, but this uh, I can easily change that. So, you know, actually to make it look better here, I'm going to double click on this. Now we're in uh, piston. So for the pad, I'm not going to go by length. I'm going to say make it up to a plane and the plane that I want is this. Okay, good. So, so this actually is going to is flush uh, with respect to that guy. Okay, very good. Uh, all right, now we're going to bring this thing down. So, uh, assembly design. Uh, this is going to be a prismatic joint. Uh, coincidence between uh, this plane and that plane. What's going on? Uh, we'll find out. Oh, you remember I said that we don't have to make this thing uh, uh, revolute. Uh, I still stand by it, I can actually take it off and it could be that the message had to do with that guy, but that's okay. So coincidence between this edge and that edge and update. Okay, first of all, uh, although this is revolute, it didn't have to be, all it had to be cylindrical. Let's make sure that our constraints are, are, are correct. So I'm going to check this box and then do a free rotation about this axis. So let's see. Does it work? Yeah, it looks good. So this is basically a to make sure that all the constraints are correct. So now we're going to go to digital mockup. Uh, where is it? Digital mockup DMU kinematics. Get the magic wand out. Here's the magic wand. Create all the joints automatically or whatever can be done. In this case, all the joints can be generated. So we should have probably four, uh, three revolutes and one prismatic. Three revolutes, one cylindrical. Now uh, the cylindrical one, it, it's okay because I made because I made this thing revolute. That one, all it has, I, I don't I don't have to insist on it being prismatic. Uh, I can make it cylindrical. But if I made this thing prismatic, then the other guy had to be revolute. So actually, let me convince you that's the case. I'm going to delete this. Uh, don't delete the children. Over here, I had a constraint between this plane and the pl plane of the piston. So let me get these things out, like this one. This is between the plane of the pin of the piston and the plane of the connecting rod. I'm going to delete this. So that makes this just the axis and two axis. And this is going to make that uh, cylindrical. And the other one uh, will become... Uh, uh, will become uh, prismatic. Let me just make sure I have the constraints here. So this is between the edges and this is between the faces. Yes, yes. That's how it's done in the book. But uh, anyway, so let's get the magic wand out. Let's check it out. This should be... Oh. Oh, boy. Uh, okay, so let me see now. Uh, between the cylinder, between the uh, between the cylinder and the let me see, piston and the connecting rod. This is why I want it to be cylindrical. This one between the piston and the track. I'm going to delete this. I'm going to make the prismatic myself. In all likelihood, this is also going to work, but I would ra rather do it the way it's done in the book. So, uh, 
prismatic, see that, between this edge and that edge, and this plane and that plane, and okay. All right, I'm pretty sure the other one would have worked too, but uh, all right, so let's make this thing, a, 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 this revolute between connecting raw, between the crank and the, and the track, uh, the track, angle driven. So this will make it angle driven, zero to 360. Okay, obviously mechanism can be simulated. We can create a cartoon here. There we are, we insert it. Rewind anything but one, and then we can play it continuously in a loop. Put it in a loop. There's no physics here; it's just it's just a cartoon. So let's make let's put some physics in there. And what do I mean by physics? So I'm going to specify, for example, the RPM of the crank, and I'm going to plot the velocity of let's hypothetically say the, the piston. Okay. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a piston, a, a, a uh, what is it called, a sensor. Uh, reference element, this is speed acceleration sensor. Reference product is the track, which is fixed. And the point, for example, that corner point of the piston. And now um, I'm going to put the physics into it. So click on f of x and click on the mechanism. And this is the command for speed of the crank. So add a formula equal to, let's, let's say it's uh, 60 RPM which is 360 degrees per second, EG divided by 1S times time. Remember, whatever you put in this formula must make sense. Left side is in degrees, right side must be must also be degrees. So this is uh, one basically turn per second, okay? So let's, uh, we're gonna do simulation with laws there we are, let's say the duration is going to be uh, three seconds, three revolutions of the of the, the crank. Activate the sensor. And what is it that I wanted to plot? For example, I wanted to plot the velocity of this point and the acceleration of it, how about that? So we go, this is direction X. Uh, so let's see, uh, X linear speed, active and X linear acceleration. Where is linear acceleration? There's, this is X, oh sorry, this is linear acceleration and X linear speed is over here. So move this thing out of the way. All right, and then play it once. It's gonna go three, three turns. And once we get there, we graph it. So what we have here is the this is the speed, proper scale is lighting up yellow, and this is the acceleration, proper acceleration. These mean nothing because uh, I just randomly put some dimensions and uh, did the problem, all right? If you have, if you're serious about this thing, think about some dimension and then uh, uh, put some meaningful speed and also check, you know, some of the points that we know. Uh, 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 etc.